In RPG-style games, there are very few things as exciting as collecting new items. Destiny 2's Curse of Osiris DLC added plenty of new exotic and legendary weapons and armor to chase after. But the addition of the Lost Prophecy weapons has changed the way I think about building a loadout. Today, we're going to talk about some of my favorite prophecy weapons and how they measure up to the more traditionally designed guns in the game. Let's do this. High impact scout rifles are notorious for being bad, so it's no surprise the Garden Progeny gets little to no love, but I can't help but respect it for trying to redefine what a powerful, super long range weapon is supposed to be. Coming standard with a long range scope and a selection of barrels optimized for range, stability, or handling, and magazine options that complement the same things, this is a gun that prides itself in having great synergy above all. Speaking to that point, the gun's main perk, Outlaw, will max out the gun's painfully slow reload speed after you score a precision kill. This works well with the high impact archetype, which is more accurate when stationary and aiming down sights. I've been using the Garden Progeny exclusively for a little over a week now, and the longer I stay in the relationship, the more I feel like I can never leave. Besides being aesthetically pleasing, there aren't many guns or archetypes that feel as rewarding. Gunning down enemies with the Nameless Midnight is fun and super effective. Watching a member of the Taken disintegrate from the last bullet of my magazine, and following up with a split-second reload, there's no feeling like it. And the weighty, rhythmic thuds that accompany my shots, they feel powerful because they are powerful. That's the best part. I don't feel like I'm restricting myself or my team by using a weapon that's outside of the meta. It punches harder than Mike Tyson when I'm accurate with my shots, its low rate of fire makes its ammo reserves seem never-ending, and again, the perk synergy is undeniably good. The Garden Progeny is most definitely worthy of being the first prophecy weapon, but despite all the good things I have to say about it, it's not my favorite. That position is reserved for something a little bit more special. Omelon are the makers of the future. Home to some of the brightest minds we've seen since the Golden Age, they make weapons that are equal parts powerful and stylish, but they're also a bit sterile. Thankfully, Osiris has been injecting a little bit of unedited fun into one of their best weapons. The Phosphorus MG4 has been reborn as the Soul Pariah 6. This weapon casts aside the chains put on it by its creators and becomes a love child that's no doubt making them very upset. Omelon tends to take itself a bit too seriously. Its weapons are perfectly sculpted and curated so that everything runs flawlessly at all times for all users at all skill levels. The Soul Pariah is a seriously effective gun, but it also knows how to have fun. The basic properties that made the MG4 an easy to use weapon are still intact, but all the perks have been thrown out for ones with a higher skill ceiling and multipliers on enjoyment. The dynamic sway reduction system has made way for Grave Robber, one of the best perks you can have on a close quarters weapon. Melee kills reload a portion of the magazine. For your magazine options, Flared Magwell will optimize your reload speed for when you can't get in range to donkey punch enemies to death. If that's not an issue, ricochet rounds will increase your range and cause your bullets to bounce off hard surfaces. Finally, the Soul Pariah still has the option for a phase mag, but that feels more like a remnant of the past. A birthmark that's admittedly still very attractive if you enjoy 600 RPM submachine guns. This gun is not only my favorite of the prophecy weapons, it's one of my favorite submachine guns, period. I'd go so far as to say it rivals the almighty Antiope-D. Its perk selection is competitive, and even though it can't compete with the Antiope at longer ranges, a true submachine gun user won't find the need to challenge someone outside of close range. They'll close the gap, do a little rat-tat-tat, and finish their opponent with a slap. Bad rhymes aside, this gun is a masterpiece worth your time. I can confidently say that once you start using the Soul Pariah, you'll have a hard time putting it down. I had a difficult time putting the Soul Pariah down to test out the Null Calamity, but I took a deep breath, tried out this adaptive auto rifle, and now I have a serious problem. Choosing between a well-rounded, balanced gun that can do a little bit of everything and one that's more specialized has never been an easy task for me. I like my loadout to excel at one thing, even if that means having a glaring weakness. But after using the Null Calamity, having no glaring strengths or weaknesses has been very relaxing. This gun does everything in its power to keep me cool and on target even amid an all-out war. 
The Zen Moment perk isn't very flashy, but it's one of the best in the game. After causing damage with your weapon, it gains increased stability, making it easier to land follow-up shots. If you're gunning down a big enemy, keeping your reticle locked onto their weak point is key to taking them down quickly and efficiently. In addition to Zen Moment, most of the barrel and magazine options for this gun increase the Null Calamity's stability and other stats simultaneously. My favorite combination has been Small Bore and the Tactical Magazine. They provide a mix of benefits that push the gun's attributes ahead of its competition. Because the numbers don't lie, this gun has a secure place in the Crucible or other PvE activities. Unfortunately, because this gun relies so heavily on its above average statistics, I don't have much else to say about it. The Null Calamity doesn't get a lot of words from me because it's easy to use, efficient, and so damn near perfect that it doesn't make me feel anything good or bad. But I suppose when a weapon leaves me speechless because of how well it's been made, that gives you a good reason to try it for yourself. To wrap things up, I wanted to talk about one prophecy weapon that stood out above the rest. Not necessarily my favorite, but one that made a very strong case for why it's the best. But none of these guns felt like they were actively vying for the top spot, and that's because these weapons are part of a set, a collection that was designed to work together. The prophecy weapons were born from necessity and reclaimed because of curiosity. As Guardians scrambled to collect Radiolarian cultures and Paradox amplifiers, we all wondered what the reward for our trials would be. I have no doubt that some people were disappointed by what they received, others indifferent and some, like me, had their wonders met with even more questions. Unified in design and forged by different foundries but improved by one man, these weapons represent the power of the Traveler and the ingenuity of the Guardians that fight to protect it at all costs. But the question is, can these bastardized weapons compete with something tried and true? I imagine there are naysayers in the different foundries and the vanguard that would say no, but the prophecy weapons can do more than compete. They can excel far beyond your expectations. They don't always conform to the meta, but if you learn to work with these guns and let them work with each other, you'll have a loadout strong enough to tackle an infinite number of challenges. And there we go. I just recently finished collecting all of the Lost Prophecy weapons, so I thought it'd be fitting to make a video about my favorites. And man, I cannot put these weapons down. Ever since I got all of them, I feel like I've collected 150 Pokemon. What I mean by that is the satisfaction is real. I use them in literally every aspect of Destiny 2. The Crucible, Prestige Nightfalls, the Prestige Raid, the normal raid. I just, I can't put them down for anything. And I don't have to because they're pretty damn awesome. So, with all of that said, the name of the game is Destiny 2. The name of the channel is iBlueAir JGR Gaming for Comedy. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment, because if you do, maybe it will help Osiris lift his curse. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.